Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. All right, we got it. Welcome to our life-giving local church where you'll discover the community and the encouragement that we are all searching for. <laughs> At Echo, our aim is to help you find your place, your people, and your purpose. Come experience us in person. Oh, right here in person. Join us at our new permanent location at the old Cinemagic Theater building for one of three Sunday services at 8.15, 9.45, or 11.15 a.m. We are excited to meet you and warmly welcome you into the Echo Church family here at this location right here. If you're excited about what God is doing through Echo, would you consider making an investment today? Mm. If you'd like to give, there are two convenient options. First, visit our website, or you can easily send your contributions via Venmo to at We Are The Echo Church. It's just, it's just so easy. They make it too easy almost. <laughs> we deeply appreciate your generosity. Enjoy Echo Online. Bye. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood, and what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior.
serve a faithful God. Amen. I am extremely, extremely excited to be in the space. Uh, just last night, a few of us gathered out in the lobby for the very first time and prayed. Amen. And, uh, and amen is right. I, we need some more amens in the room here. It's, it's a dead room. Uh, it's treated so well that if you don't respond to me, I'm just kind of give up and I'm not going to preach third service. So, um, But uh, we, we got in the lobby and uh, we started praying and that was the first time and the first moment that I really just stopped. We just ran and ran and ran and ran. And I just knelt on the ground and uh, just began to, to, to take a step back and begin to realize the miracle. And, and Christy and I are super appreciative. And ever since the launch of the church, we've always been overwhelmed with God's goodness. Um, and we've always felt undeserving. Uh, we've never looked in the mirror and thought like, hey, this is like, we got something going on here. Traditionally, it's like, mm, we need some help. And I'm just so glad that you joined us because you need some help too. Amen. <laughs> I'm kind of poking fun at you guys. My point is, is, is we're at a beautiful church with beautiful people that love Jesus. And we're just trying to do this thing together and trying to figure it out. And I'm telling you, if you're here finding or looking for a pastor that's perfect, there's another great church down the road. Let me know how that goes. Uh, but we're, we're, we're entering a brand new series called we dash re underscore refill in the blank. And there are so many unique words that we could fill in there. But today I want to talk about something completely pertinent to what we're living in right now. And that word is renovation. Come on, somebody. Renovation, renovation. I just want to do a quote uh, from, you know who it is, Chip and Joanna Gaines. Uh, renovators, they're like, they're like the, um, what we call the goat of renovators. Like they're the best in craft. Uh, their show is Fixer Upper. And Chip says this, he says, I'm the fixer, not the decorator. I tear down walls, but I will not throw pillows. Like, uh, Y'all understand there are two different types of people. There are people who can destroy things and there are other people that clean things. Can I, can I hear amen for what one you prefer? <laughs> can we just admit who we are? Who, who's the one over here destroying things? Amen. And who likes to, who's angry at the destroyer and you happen to marry them? <clears throat> I destroy things. Let's lean into the scripture. As I was thinking about uh, just what... Uh, what to speak about today, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 came to mind. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. This is our story. This is the truth. This is how God works. And, and, and I don't know how you came into this space but I want to tell you this one truth. The new is here. Y'all, you just hear that? The new is here. And by your response, I kind of think some of you doubt it just a little bit, and that's okay. Because there is a tension. And the tension is, is why is it that we see all the old when we strive to step into the new? I understand some of you came in here and, man, you, know, you feel broken. You feel bruised, you, you feel tarnished and forgotten, ruined, and, and maybe even to the level of useless. But I want to tell you today, that God sees something new within you. God desires to do something great within you. How many of you know the truth does not lie in how you see yourself, but how God sees you? That deserved an amen, or at least an oh me. Like, like, like God sees something phenomenal within you. And I'm just so thankful that God saw through the dust. He saw through the cracks. He, he, he saw through the dents and the imperfections within me. And as I was thinking about renovation, I was just kind of Googling a, a few terms. Uh, there's a Japanese term called wabi-sabi. And I'm saying it as best as I can. I did go on YouTube to make sure I could pronounce it as best as I can. Uh, but that term is an aesthetic 
characterized by finding beauty and authenticity, simplicity, imperfection, and natural wear and tear. It's being able to see things that don't look very special and seeing through the wear and tear and the beat up nature of something. <laughs> Can I confess to you something? I've had this hanging in my garage for 10 years. Christy says more, but who's counting? I was working the yard, or my backyard, like it's, I got some woods, okay, and really steep hill, and, and honestly, the ambition started because I wanted, uh, the whole project started because I just wanted a really good sled hill, the sled hill of death, I call it, for my kids, and, and um, anyway, so a number of trees were cut down, and when I was dealing with this one and got the root ball out of it, um, I just kind of left it there, and I let it sit there for maybe one or two years, and after like a few years being in the same spot, I began to look at that differently because the dirt started kind of coming out and it dried up. And, and I, I just looked at it and I was like, you know what? There might be something special here. I, I think I can see something through the ugly. I, I think sometimes I can see the vision of an ordinary object and see something absolutely fascinating about it. I, I like to collect things. Some, some people, specifically my wife, would tell me, I like to hoard things. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Anybody relate at all? Anybody relate at all? But I, I brought this up, this big piece of art here, because for 10 years, it's been sitting in my garage, and I have had a vision for it, but not necessarily the time to deal with it. And I remember coming out one day, and that was gone. It was no longer hanging in the garage. And I said, where did my root ball go? And I went out back, and I saw that it was in the fire pit. <laughs> wow is right. I said, do you not see the beauty? Do you not see the ambition? Can you not see what I'm going to do? And she said, you're not going to do it. Here's the deal. I think this represents us. The tension is we're in mid-renovation. The new is here, but we can really get stuck on seeing all the old. Someone here today is very special to me. And 20 years ago, he saw a root ball and he saw something special. He decided to hire me to be his youth pastor. And so I think it is more... Uh, than, than a, a good time to honor Pastor Jim and Pastor Julie, my pastors who are here today. Um, yeah, let's stand up and honor them. You guys are phenomenal. And they surprised me today. <laughs> um, you can take your seat. Um, about six years ago, when things had, had uh, taken a little bit of turn from, from what we had planned, I called Jim and uh, he was driving somewhere and we just cried together, not knowing where, what we would do, where we would go. But still through those tears, I could hear, I believe in you. And I'm telling you what, if you knew me at, at uh, 22 years old, you would not want to hire me. <laughs> I guarantee you <laughs> that is utter truth. Uh, but Jim, thank you so much. And, and, but so many of us, we live within that tension, the, the, what I call the now and the, the not yet. And, and I just want to encourage someone today, and this is really the big idea, this is the heart of the message, is renovation is hard to live in, but I want to tell you, it's worth living through. It's worth it. Renovation is hard to live in, but it's worth it. Has anybody ever renovated your house? Is anybody out there like, how many have lived in your renovation? You know how difficult that is for sure if you're not just flipping it and selling it. And obviously we're always hoping that that works and that's worth it and you tithe off those proceeds. <laughs> I didn't say that first hour. <laughs> but if you're living within renovation, it's difficult. It's, it's a struggle. I, I love being in this building because... Because the old is here and some of the new has come. I hope you walked into the lobby and you saw something beautiful. You saw something comfortable, something welcoming, something inviting, something that would invite you into a relationship with others that you would just sit down and get comfortable. 
to break down all barriers so that you would receive from Jesus. You would have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. But if you went a little bit to the left here by the men's bathroom, you begin to know that the old is here too. Don't go past those drapes, please. <laughs> Don't do it. King Kong. Yeah, yeah, no, King Kong's here to stay. Here he is. <laughs> Uh, unless the right price comes away, so everything's for sale. Um, but yeah, if anybody's ever lived through renovation and you get to the other end, you begin to realize it's worth it. I've been pretty serious today. I, for those fans out there of, of my jokes, I got one for you. Anybody want to hear it? Okay, here it is. Oh, here it is. I got one fan right in the center. Thank you. I recently went to a new family doctor. The waiting room was... Spectacular! It was spectacular. I just made a word up. Spacious and freshly renovated. I love being in a freshly renovated space. And there was extremely fresh, uh, friendly staff. And there was even a sign that said, uh, "We're going to respect your patient privacy, and what we're not going to we're not going to call you by name." Which is a person. I mean, man, that would take a lot of you know pressure off. You'd feel safe in the space, and we're going to embarrass you. But as this man sat down, he started looking at the car magazines. Just a few minutes later, a nurse called out over the, the intercom and said, the 32-year-old man with hemorrhoids, please proceed to examination <laughs> room three. <laughs> How many know we're all in process? We're all mid-renovation. Some of us are building up and some of us are breaking down. Breaking down. But what I want to do is I want to talk. I'm going to give you some handles to the message. The Lord is doing something new, right? We live within the old, but we're living within the new. And, 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 and I guess I want to give you something that would help sustain you through renovation. The first thing that would sustain you through renovation, because I have learned this firsthand, illustrated by what I was just talking with Pastor Jim and Julie, is people will help you through it. How many know you need to have a helper to demo? You need a helper when it comes to life. It always is helpful to have that friendly person that you're working alongside of at your workspace, to have a friend sitting there at school that has your back, has your best intentions in mind. And for the last 28 days, I, I got to say it, I am overwhelmed with how many people showed up to turn this building around. Over 27 days, 200 plus volunteers, 2,000 hours of volunteer work. Man, you guys turned it around and we would not have been able to do it unless you showed up. And I am just so thankful. And after about Thursday, was, we weren't done, trust me. I was, we were still working late last night and early this morning. But Thursday, we had the first piece of furniture come into our freshly carpeted lobby. And two, uh, two of us, three of us actually, two laborers and, and just lowly Andy, we sat to take a deep breath. And one of the guys looked at me and said, I, I do these type of projects all the time. And this scope of project takes about six months, maybe, if you're lucky. But what we have done is purely a miracle. Yeah. Can we just honor them again? I mean, they worked their guts out. And I, my response was, well, we just kind of leaned into our Amish roots and raised the barn. Uh, so it's hard living. It's hard living in renovation, but it's always worth it. And, and looking forward, though, I would invite you if you're sitting in this room and you feel isolated, you, you might be lonely. Maybe you're new to the community. We always get visitors that are just brand new to town. Uh, I just want to tell you, you know, un, unashamedly, we are starting table communities today. There are small groups that invite everybody to come and be a part of the community, to find their people, to find their place, to walk out of isolation, to, to, to walk out of doing life alone and walking together in life. And so please, out in the lobby before you leave, go check those out. There's a QR code there. We'd love for you to join one and find the support and hope you're looking for. The second thing, when it comes to this building, we put so much attention out in the lobby because of this one fact. I want you to linger in the lobby. Any lobby lingerers out there, you're ready. You're so sick of tearing down and setting up. Like, come on, like, I want you to be, I want to invite you when you leave to not be in a hurry. You know what I'm saying? Like when we did the prayer thing last night and I stopped for the very first time, it was like the first time I was able to take a breath within 30 days. 
And I hope for some of you that have been too busy, you've been too stressed, you've been too worried, you've been too consumed with everything going on that when we leave this space, even for 15 minutes, even for five minutes, that you would just linger in the lobby enough to find a friend or someone to find you. And then let me just, let me help this out a little bit. If you see someone sitting alone in a chair and they're sitting on the phone, interrupt them. You know what I'm saying? If someone's sitting in the corner and they're not talking to somebody, hey, go invite or go, go introduce yourself to them. Let's make lifelong friendships here because we need people to sustain through renovation. Yes. The second thing is this, is we need vision. We need to see things differently. I like the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since death came through a man. I mean, that is the vision, right? That was the vision. We live within sin, the sin nature, the fallen nature of humankind. The, re the resurrection comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die. We, we, we're all spiritually dead, but in Christ. So in Christ, all will be made alive. We need a fresh eye when it comes to our walk our spiritual walk. And this is a new season for this church. And I'm really excited for us collectively. But what if this is a new season for yourself individually when it comes to what God wants to do in you? What if he wanted to do something new? What if the Holy Spirit would begin to give you a new vision for your life? In fact, it's Right now, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for all of us. And again, we don't even need keys because the keys aren't, they don't, the Holy Spirit doesn't need it. He's used, you know, before keys were existed, he would meet with people. But I just want to pray for us. Holy Spirit, you're in this space. You're dwelling here. And yet you're dwelling within us. And it's only by you that we can see a new vision. And so across this room, we invite you to revision. <laughs> Listen to this. To revise what we've seen. And maybe it's the future. Maybe it's our past. And maybe even right now, it's now. Lord, would you meet us today? Would you start re-envisioning, giving us a new perspective and how we are to move forward. If you agree with that, will you say amen? amen? The last thing we need to sustain through renovation is Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like people are great. They're going to be extremely helpful, and a vision is, is, is phenomenal. But here at this church, we believe that Jesus should be at the center. Amen. The center of everything we do. You know, I think a lot of times we think that like when it comes to Jesus in our, li in our life, as long as he's within our sphere, it will be all good. But I want, to be, I want to remind you individually and collectively that we are a church that believes in on surrendering all to put Jesus at the center of everything we do. Our daily life, our family, our workspace, our school. And that's what I'm hoping that God is doing. I hope he's beginning to renovate, that he's beginning to recreate that vision within you. Hebrews 13, verse five, it says, keep your lives free. Listen, this, this is a lost perspective. This is a lost focus, but this is what Jesus can do. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, this is his promise. This is the reason why you need Jesus at the center. He says this, Jesus will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. What an amazing promise. And it continues on and says, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. I guess what I wanted to tell you today is that Jesus changes everything. And I just sense some of you, you walked in this space and maybe this whole thing is brand new to you. And you might have come into this perspective or this, this scenario, this context, and we're like, man, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for God. And what I want to tell you the truth is, is he's been looking for you. I love songs that say we're seeking after you, but I love the undergirding, the under root truth, the beauty, the art of God searching 
for you. I think some of you, right now, you're, you're sitting out there and you're even feeling like, hey, Pastor Andy, like, how did you know? <laughs> how did you know this is how I feel? Like, how are you, how are you speaking only to me at the moment? And, and I just wanna say that has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with Jesus. And he's trying to use this lowly vessel to invite you into a relationship with him. To invite you into a relationship of hope. To invite you into a relationship of love and peace and joy that you can't experience in any other way or place but through our King, Jesus. Jesus, we... um, We sit here thankful. We just slow down right now, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you begin to speak to us? You begin to hmm, begin to work within our hearts. Holy Spirit, would you begin to speak to us, when you begin to identify areas of renovation. For those that came in here and they felt far from God, hmm, would you reveal the address to them? The space where they meet you place that you invite them to the table into a relationship not into knowledge not just into information but into transformation into a loving relationship with you father holy spirit would you begin begin a work today in and through us Lord. I want to invite someone today to pray a prayer that we're about to pray for the very first time. And if you don't have a relationship with God, you don't even know what that means. You feel far from God. You feel distance. You never even think of it's possible. At this church, we pray a prayer every week that is a reminder of our surrender, a reminder of our commitment to Jesus because he found us where we are. It's a prayer that reminds us that God is interested in the one over the 99. So Echo Church, I'm gonna ask that you pray or stand up as we are about to pray this prayer. And as this is our reminder, may this be a movement for someone new in this space today. Let us pray. Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions than answers, and I choose to follow you anyway. Let's make this song our prayer.
I got to play a small part in us. Sorry, Dex, I'm making this worse for you. Uh, I got to play a small part maybe in us being in this building today. And one of the things that I did was kind of some logistical planning. So when we looked at this building, I looked at the budget. I looked at the number of parking spaces. I wanted to know how many chairs would fit in this room. But you know what I was never asked? Nobody ever asked my opinion about the carpet color. And you want to know why? Because I can see really well what's today, but I have a really hard time seeing what's in the future. So a good example is uh, my wife just picked out a new door for our house. And she's like, what do you think of this door? I'm like, I don't know. What do you think of this door? And I'm like, well, that looks cool too. Whatever you think. So she puts the door in and I'm like, wow, this door looks amazing. But if the door's like five feet away from where it's supposed to go, it doesn't click in my head. And what I think about is, I think Jesus is a lot more like my wife in this scenario than me. And what I mean is, he's not worried about what's going on today. He doesn't see the 22-year-old pastor that's probably a little rough around the edges, pretty strong-headed, you know, going to be a leader, but right now probably tough to lead. Instead, what he sees is he sees where we're going. I asked my wife about the root ball. She said, I want to hang that in my house. That's cool felt ridiculous to me when she said that but she was serious and I think there's one of these things where fortunately Jesus didn't see doesn't see just the dirty root ball that came out 10 plus years ago he sees where we could be and where we're going and so a lot of times what we do is we get stuck 
And we believe, well, the past is what's going to hold me back to the future. But that's not what Jesus sees. Jesus isn't like me in that scenario. He's not looking at the today. He's looking at the future. He knows what it can look like. He knows what your life can look like. He knows what your, your family can look like. And I think sometimes we are too quick to be held back by the past to trust God with the future. So today, let's trust God with our future. God, we trust you with where we're going. We trust you with what we're doing. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. God, you are so good, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's celebrate with some people that are at church for the first time today. Come on. We're kind of all at church for the first time today. This is rad. As you're leaving this week, we are so glad you're here for our very first week here. Echo Church, we love you. We're so glad you're here. Can't wait to see you next week. Have a great week, everybody.